Welcome to Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. My name is Mumpulu Giluruma Mohobe. Our objective is to enthuse, inspire, energize, and empower entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs of all stripes here in BW and beyond. We do so by inviting these entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs into our makeshift studio. Sometimes we call them to the restaurant, sometimes we go uh, to our studio and we ask them to share their experiential knowledge, their experiences and their expertise. And we ask them uh, as many questions as we can aimed at empowering you also as a viewer. Hello dear viewer and listener, my name is Mumpulu Kiluruma Mohobe. I welcome you to another episode, an invigorating one I might add, of Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. <coughs> um, occasionally we get captains of industry, like today we have a CEO of a large corporate. Uh, you'll find out at a moment. But before I introduce my guest or the guest introduces himself, do me a favor, please just strike that subscribe button. We need all the support uh, you can give us. Um, as always, we strive to give you life-changing business education that can make an impact or a positive impact <coughs> in your life. Uh, welcome to the studio, uh, Mr. Banamas Mavuma. Uh, thank you for having me, Mr. Mohobe. Okay. Yes. So privileged. I've known you for donkey's years, it yeah. seems. <laughs> but uh, this is the first time I've had the privilege of asking you a few questions. Can we share, start with um, you sharing your background uh, story a little bit? Yes, no, thank you for that. Um, uh, I, as you know, I'm, I don't know if you still remember, I, I was doing uh, sciences at the University of Botswana. I remember. And as my friends uh, transferring over to the United States, um, I, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't meet the bar, mm -hmm. and I finally ended up uh, doing science education and became a science teacher for uh, a good four years. Mm -hmm. And during those four years, there were promises made by our government you know, to take us through for masters and other things, and those promises were never met. Mm -hmm. And uh, on one good day, I got up and updated my CV and came looking for a job in Khabaroni. I was a teacher at Kharis uh, Chalice Senior Secondary School. Oh. And, uh, um, on this one day, in, I think in 1992, mm -hmm. late 1992, I think November, I updated my CV. The idea was really to just come through and maybe give it to places like uh, President Hotel and other places where I, I could. I, I knew people who were not really in that, uh, who had studied in that industry could to break into it. Yes. Now I met somebody who, who had actually previously worked for Associated Insurance Broker, which is now called Minet. He's mm -hmm. gone through some changes in the names. I'll let you know about that. Mm. And uh, as we were discussing, he said, no, I, I, there's actually a vacancy at AIB. Um, can I have your CV? I gave it to him. And then a week later... I Associated Insurance Brokers. At the, oh, at the moment, yeah. At that time, it was called Associated Insurance Brokers. Mm. This was what is now referred to as Minet. Mm -hmm. Having gone through the name Aeon. Mm -hmm. So he, he went and handed in my CV and um, one day I'm in the staff room, I receive a call and as fate would have it, uh, you know, I went for an interview, impressed them and I got my, mm -hmm. my foot into the insurance industry in November 1992, yes. just before we were going for uh, the Christmas holidays. And... Um, when I got in there, I uh, was lucky to be under the supervision and tutelage of one lady called Mrs. Dora Moremi. Very Familiar. hard worker. I know her. Very yeah. smart and uh, you know, very dedicated to what she was doing. And I think with that, as, that helped me de develop the attitude around you know, working as hard and the like. Mm -hmm. And what actually helped me or propelled me or pushed me through in the, uh, you know, supposed to how I got here, was that uh, these insurance courses, when I got there, I was told, um, you know, coming from your background with your, your science degree, you don't really fit in this uh, uh, financial space, mm -hmm. uh, but you can do what we call insurance programs, uh, these, there's the associate, associate stage and then there's the fellow, fellowship stage and then mm -hmm. you know, the other management courses that you can do. And because I, I had developed an interest 
I said, you worked with Dora for the few months I was there. I registered for the exams. Um, most of my colleagues then, because some had done diplomas and degrees in the, in the financial space, uh, were exempted from, uh, uh, from writing most of the exams. There were yes. nine that you had to write, but they're exempted because, you know, the degree had things they could tick off on the, on the program, but I had to write all nine. Oh. So I, I did the first four past, uh, past them. Lucky for me, there was one that I had uh, done very well in, mm. and then they moved me into the, into the rewrite, rewrite program where the others were rewriting, I was, I, I was writing an additional one. Mm. And then the next, uh, the next year I did the last four and I got my associate in, and I think one of the shortest times they had seen in the industry, apart from those that had, had the, of course, the mm. exemption. When you but say shortest time, you mean within? I mean, I did, I did in, within a year. Yeah. You write the one year and then rewrite in, mm. in the, the, I think, there's a period where you rewrite, then there's a period then you write again. Mm. Maybe a year, yeah. a few, a few months. So it was, uh, uh, yeah. I impressed, impressed myself as well. So yeah. obviously, <laughs> then because all nine were done within twelve months. Twelve, or slightly longer, maybe. Mm. I think let's let's give it a fifteen month period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where I'd found people within the organization and others in the industry who had actually taken slightly longer. And yeah. I mean, by slightly longer, I mean quite mm. a bit of time. Well, I'm going to chip in there and mm -hmm. ask you, what was the differentiator? What made you tenacious? What, what was it I'm, about you that, you know, um, you know, set you above the others? No, I think it was the hard work. And uh, I'd come from a, a place, a teaching space, where promises had been made and had not been fulfilled. And uh, there, there, was, there was really, I had the drive to really succeed. Mm. I, I, I know people don't like admitting this, but there was a, a certain element of competition against myself. Your, yeah, against yes, yourself. When I come to Gaboro and I see my, you know, my friends mm. that were, were, doing, were doing other programs, you know. Going places. Going places. Mm. And I felt um, uh, somebody said, this is what you need to do to mm. get where you need to go. So mm. I, I did exactly that. Mm. And that was the drive. And like I said, I had a, I had a, a good mentor in the... The lady who supervised me, very hardworking, and I was really just saying, if you work hard enough, yeah. that would be it. So when you changed from teaching to insurance, it wasn't because you didn't enjoy teaching. It was because prospects for progression were limited in teaching, and there were better prospects on the insurance side. Exactly. Um, <laughs> teaching was wonderful. You know, you had... You had breaks. You had breaks. You had, uh, you had afternoons off. You had all kinds of mm -hmm. things that you wouldn't get in the normal yeah. uh, work, uh, working environment. It was it was wonderful. But uh, um, one at that age, I, well, I was very young. But at that age, you, you you really want to look like the others and do what the others are doing and really have uh, make a difference. Uh, yeah, make a difference. Mm. And for me, I I went into a space where they told me I could make a difference, and I did, mm. uh, for myself, and, uh, you know, mm. I did actually encourage others to do exactly what I did, which they've done, and uh, mm. this is where we are in the industry now. Yeah, so from Associated Insurance Brokers, what happened? I worked, worked for Associated Insurance Brokers um, two, three years, and then my mentor, or supervisor, went off to do her master's degree. Then I was transferred to someone else who didn't, in my view, didn't value me that much. So they sort of transferred me into a space where I was filing and really just coming there, then there'd be these, this pile of, a pile of papers, then I'd find the file, files, put them in there, and there wasn't much that was happening. Whereas under Mamo Remy, there were quite a number of things. Uh, we were managing some uh, yeah. schemes. There funds. was exposure. There was exposure <laughs> to quite a number of uh, areas within the uh, insurance space that I, I thought one could learn from. Mm. So I thought, let me leave this organization. Mama Remy's not here. Uh, nobody really seems to care. Then I, I met up with another old friend of mine, Mulas Hopol at Sam Nandos. He says, uh, you know, would you want to... I know him well. <laughs> yeah, I know him well. And he says, maybe I see you. Don't you want to come and see what you can do there? So I said, mm. oh, okay. Gave my CV, moved across to BIC. Mm -hmm. BIC was there for some years until um, a certain gentleman, A. Botes, who had been the uh, managing director for 
BIC mm -hmm. uh, and had left was opening up a new insurance company called Regent. Mm -hmm. And Regent was very fresh, very new. I uh, was actually employee number one. Oh. Where we sat in a, <laughs> a hall mm -hmm. and I was sitting on gun chairs, but uh, because he was very, uh, he was a very good marketer, uh, we had business coming in even though we didn't have, you know, infrastructure and the like we are piling it there that i didn't mind to do because i was i was <laughs> you were starting I was, something I was big. starting something big something big so yeah we got them um and i know i was joined by another lady called bonyana uh, she's kunda now but she used to be bonyana Oteng. and then the two of us sort of uh, got along with it um i think on the one on the first month we're not paid by the. I know there's no such date, but by the 35th of the month, <laughs> we're not. We're not received our salaries, and banks were calling and yeah. asking us all kinds of questions. And then we were later joined by a gentleman who had come from Bank of Botswana called Mr. Mutusi Kibalefetsi, and then we sort of moved along, and then we built the company. Mm. Um, over the years, I think it started in '96, '97. What does that tell you about starting from nothing? Because they, I've heard so many entrepreneurs say they need. They need to have it all before they start. Yeah, well, I think starting from nothing actually uh, does give you that drive to 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 succeed. You know, you have you have, you have you have family behind you. At that time, I was already married. You have family, you have friends, and you have this bank banker that you need to pay. So you you work that extra mile. You go out and you, you really push. You push. You are hungry because you need this thing to succeed. To work, yeah. And you, and you want to really tell those guys that you left behind that you're not doing so badly after all. And mm -hmm. yeah, so it was, it was, um, so there's both positive and negative yes. uh, motivation, yes, of course. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, you've now, uh, at the pinnacle of what used to be called Aeon, right. it's now called Me, uh, Minette. How did you get to Aeon? Well, from yes, from Regent. I again met Dora. She had been back from uh, the studies for some time, and she she was now, uh, I believe, uh, the deputy managing director of the organization. And uh, she she we, at the time there were not many Batswana who had uh, achieved the associateship, and uh, you know were quite I, I don't want uh, they were quite knowledgeable in the in that in the insurance space. It was yeah. a new area for 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 the country and. Mm. Yeah. So she went hunting for me, asked me for, for a drink and told me she should like me to rejoin uh, Aeon. Mm -hmm. In fact, AIB had already had, in, had been 20, bought by Aeon. It had been bought by Aeon, which is an American, uh, global mm -hmm. American company, and they now rebranded to Aeon uh, from uh, Associated Insurance Brokers on, on the year 2020. Sorry. What, what year is it now? So we're in 2020. 2001, when you had the the, mm. the 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 thing there with the ten towers, yeah, 2001. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's when. 9/11. Yeah, 9/11. Yeah. yeah. So she asked me to come back, and um, uh, she promised me a position. Well, she was she was saying come back as this position, and I I knew from back then when I was starting that this is quite a senior position. Mm -hmm. It was a senior account executive position. Okay. You know, position has since trans uh, transformed in the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, the other others I filled the gap, but that was really the space from senior account. You then get into the exco, and then. Mm -hmm. you know. So yes, I was quite happy to to come back, and again when I came back, still under her supervision. And um, under Dora's supervision. Under Dora's supervision, and she again still provided the, the same uh, same uh, leadership and mentorship. And uh, now it's teaching me more advanced because you, mm. when you are when you are really new, it's, you're really just doing the basic stuff. But now you're really getting to the more advanced stuff. Yeah, still on that. What what would you say are the key characteristics that she had as a mentor, as a successful mentor? Um, she. Very hard worker, attention to detail, recognition of good work by her mentee, mentee and any other colleague. And um, uh, she would give you the recognition. She would uh, give you the exposure. Mm -hmm. uh, she, she, 
He didn't believe in us throwing into the deep end, but there were ways of throwing you into the deep end. Uh, <laughs> without, she, without she, it. Yeah, then she would call you and say, I, I, well, I, I could see you had it in you. You just, you just needed that extra push. So yeah. that, that really got you to mm -hmm. a point where you, you could do it yourself. Yeah. So for me, that, that allowed me to go out on my mm -hmm. own. And um, this, this insurance is really about growing the business by yeah. getting new clients. Yeah. That's, the, that's really what it's about. Mm. Yes, it's about insuring people and telling them about how important it is, but a business is, is about growing the business. Yeah, yeah. Growing, the business. growing the business. Continually. Continually. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so your budget grows year on year, and you have to go and get the business. Yeah. So yeah. you were with, uh, with 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 Aeon for which which was uh, for the second time for how long and and um, have you stayed there until it changed to Minette? Yes, mm. I joined it in two thousand and one, uh, and um, I've really progressed through the the, the the various stages within the organization up mm. to where I am now. I was appointed in this position in twenty eighteen. Oh, okay, twenty eighteen. So. Uh, like I said, you know, you, you go and get business. So um, I was lucky at the time that the government was uh, creating a lot of parastatals. Yeah. It was creating a lot of parastatals. Uh, we were really uh, semi-independent mm. government, but it's a parastatal. Yeah, there. yeah. It's the, the so they needed, they had their own boards, they needed to have their own the structures. Independent budget independent and everything. Budgets, mm. uh, yeah, and so those are, those are the... That was the area I went in, and being the biggest broker at the time, those were the clients that I started targeting. Every new uh, prestator that came up, mm -hmm. as, uh, um, until somebody taught them tenders. But <laughs> at the time, at the time I go there and structure. And just make a pitch. Yeah, make a pitch and structure the insurances. This is what you need. Mm. You have you have people, you have assets, other mm. things that mm. life covers, and, and you structure mm. it and you, you presented mm. it, and then they they gave you the go ahead. Okay. And so that's how the business grew. And obviously, as you grow business within an organization, they tend to notice you. The, mm. the main executive, uh, they start uh, wanting to know who and you know, what you are all about. So that's, that's yeah. just how it grew. Let's talk a little bit about the change from Aeon to Minet. First, what is Minet? <laughs> Minet, uh, I can't exactly tell what the name means. If at all, it means anything. Somebody thought it was French and they say Menai, Menai. But, <laughs> yeah, but Minet is the name that's been around the insurance industry in, in Southern Africa and say in Africa for quite some time. Even uh, I think Associated Insurance Broker uh, back in the 80s um, had uh, either a shareholding of Minet or was Minet mm -hmm. before it became Associated Insurance Broker. Oh. And then there was uh, an, a company that we we acquired in 2013, it was called Glenrin MIB and the M really was Minet. So mm -hmm. when, uh, when the people who created the Minet, I'll tell you later about how we, how we became Minet, but the people who bought and then wanted to call themselves a name, mm -hmm. they thought of this old name that's been in the mm -hmm. industry for some time and they said this would be the appropriate name to, to, okay. to call the company and then say, they went for it. Okay. At some point, you worked under a very prominent individual who then later became a minister of finance, yes. uh, Dr. Matseka. Um, how was it working under him, and uh, insofar as mentorship and things like that are concerned? Uh, yes. Um, just like you, uh, I, I knew uh, Matseka from my UB days. Uh, we were quite close, and uh, even when he, he was a lecturer at UB, I mean, we visited each other, but not that close. So when he came through, I was quite comfortable with having him as a, as a leader. Um, uh, I'd seen him progress, uh, you know, at CEDA and how, the years that he had stayed there and, you know, what he had done for the organization. We were, kind of, we were quite comfortable as a team to have him join us. And I must say, it was, it was um, because he, I think he was a finance, economics person, he, he, he also pushed for results mm -hmm. push for results uh, you don't meet your budget they, they will obviously be uh, talking down but um i think all in all he was uh, he, he, i think he was straightforward he was straightforward uh, he would reward the way where he sees that there's mm -hmm. value and um 
he was a very strong character, mm -hmm. very, very good at networking. Um, that, I think I, I can give him that for the time that he spent there. Mm. He had good networking ability and bring, just bringing people in. Because he wasn't an insurance person, he would bring in the, the, experts. the potentials mm -hmm. and then he, he, he would let the, 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 us, the people, the insurance people, do the do work. Do the work, give so you room to operate. Give, give us room to operate. So it was, mm. it was quite... Uh, uh, in fact, it was, that was a period where the organization grew, uh, grew. Okay, number one, because we, are, we, had, we acquired Glenrand, mm -hmm. and we acquired it, it, was, it had quite a, an extensive uh, pension yeah. admin book. Mm -hmm. We were not really strong on that. The people knew us for the insurance side that we did. And we acquired Glenrand, and then we had an extensive, uh, a big, a big uh, pension admin book. And this pushed that on the side of the insurance side to try and you know mm. uh, uh, pull up our socks and grow. This. So it was a time where this, uh, the organization grew uh, quite exponentially. Yeah, I must say. yeah. wonderful. Mm -hmm. You know, the Aon is seen as an American company, but I noticed that you see Minet as a Pan-African company. How did it uh, transform from American, quote unquote, to yeah. Pan-African? Yes. And tell us how the Pan-African element as well, just yeah. develop that point. Yes, no, um, um, yes, I think we've had, we've had quite a strong run under the Aeon brand. Aeon was a huge uh, global brand, and at one point sponsored Manchester United, and... Yes, yeah, I remember. And, and um, th that, you know, whether it was not, even though it was not quantifiable, I believe, uh, you know, gave us favor with, with some of the menu supporters who then <laughs> identified with us and, yeah. and, 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 he showed, and he showed with us. Yes. But um, over some time, I think what, um, what Aon was do, doing was um, trying to, this is just my personal view. I think mm. they were trying to move away and uh, they thought, Things were getting bad in Africa because they had they had been fined in Nigeria. Nigeria, some some somebody had been naughty at Nigeria, mm. and uh, this was an own office, and there had been a fine. I think five million, or whatever mm. uh, U.S. dollars, that or even more. Mm. And then they uh, there had been similar incidents with other banks, and when they saw the likes of Barclays want to pull out, and mm. they, I think um, they. Well, that, that narrative was that they, they are looking elsewhere, their interests have changed mm -hmm. and they, they would really like to uh, slowly pull out of Africa. And um, when, they, when they said that in 2017, the senior managers or the exec in the different countries, because Aon was in uh, quite a number of countries in Africa, mm -hmm. um, they came together and uh, uh, met up with the, a, a private equity company uh, based in South Africa, but it's really operating in the region called Capital Works mm -hmm. in 2017 and pitched to Aon to say, uh, look, we'd like to buy the Aon interests. Mm -hmm. We'd like to buy Aon yes. in, in Africa. So at that time, 2017, I think they went through the processes and the deal was signed. Yeah. But uh, they this left out Aon Botswana, I think, uh, Aon South Africa, I think Mauritius, and uh, I believe another country. Mm. I think so they went, they, they went through that, but uh, I think the reason why Aon globally wanted to keep uh, Botswana, for them, I, I believe, what we hear is that we're quite a profitable mm. company for them. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to hold on to us a little longer. <laughs> and South Africa, because of the, the area it is in, the, the economy within South Africa, they felt, let's keep South Africa, and I think Mauritius, for similar reasons. Yeah. So they held on to us. Uh, but these, one, the, this, this, these ones then said, okay, we've bought, we've brought, we've bought Aon, now let's find a name that would, will resonate with you know, insurance within mm -hmm. Africa. Like I said earlier on Minet, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, had been around in different uh, in different uh, countries. countries and in different structures mm -hmm. or in the, in a name somewhere and they they felt let's call it Minet uh, people will relate with that mm -hmm. and uh, because we're really basically all in Africa we brought these uh, the African uh, the African interests um, 
let's start doing some work and uh, localizing whatever products we have okay. in Africa. However, mm. Aeon did not really fully want to move out of Africa. They didn't want so, to divest. Uh, yeah, so they, 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 want, they moved out, but they wanted to have a relationship. They had clients in Africa. Mm -hmm. And similarly, some of these countries that were, had changed to, these offices that had changed to Minet had clients in other uh, spaces where Aeon was, mm -hmm. you know, or they did insurance, specialized insurances such as aviation of large fleets and other things, mm. uh, or mining uh, in, uh, insurances in other spaces. So they agreed to have what they call an Aeon Global Network Correspondent Agreement. Mm -hmm. So all these Minet offices had, and uh, they had, they have, even on the letter, they have Aeon Global Network Correspondent, meaning that mm -hmm. we work together. Okay, Away. so so Aon would be like a parent entity, uh, although it's not a, 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 a you know owning owning, but it is part of a loose association. These others are yeah. part of a loose association linked yes, to. We, we, it's really loose association around us having the ability to use some of that technology, uh, so, so, uh, having access to the employees. Mm -hmm. And the 50,000 employees in 120 countries, we have access That's a to lot. them. Yeah, we have access to them for for specialized risks. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the technology, the research, you know, the, uh, the an analytics. We, mm -hmm. we we are able to access that. Uh, you know, we have uh, obviously an, an agreement that yeah. expires at some time and then has to be renewed. Oh, I see. So maybe vary setting out yeah, terms, setting out terms and varying them where mm -hmm. they need to be varied, but. Um, um, that's how really Aon moved out, the Minette came in, mm -hmm. and, and then because of this correspondent agreement, they, they, they more or less waited or knocked on Aon's door to say, well, how, how are we far with you guys, how far are we with you guys um, giving us Botswana or selling Botswana to us? <laughs> so in 2020... The, Two years ago. Yeah, 2020. The, in the height of COVID. Yeah, in the height of COVID, the <laughs> negotiations started. Mm. Um, uh, and we were going through, like you're saying, COVID, and we were mm. going through quite a number of things. We had actually had the the, the new Retirement Fund Act uh, come through. I think mm. 2017 it became effective, and the requirement was that uh, you can't. There's no pension fund uh, administration company or retire fund administration company that can be linked to any other business. Mm -hmm. But in our cases, Aon. We, we, we are composite, we, we did insurance, pension fund administration, group life, we did everything within the one roof mm -hmm. that was called Aeon. So we had a time where we were uh, you know, going through the process of separating the two mm -hmm. companies, registering, and, and bundling, and bundling <laughs> yeah. re registering another one mm -hmm. and uh, you know, separating employees. Well, right at that time, COVID hit mm -hmm. and uh, you know, people started working from home and all that. And things got slow. Mm. However, during all that, that was when uh, Minet said uh, we are coming through. Uh, and this time they were coming through with a local uh, private equity company called Africa Lighthouse Capital, mm -hmm. uh, headed by Mr. Bami Pule. Yeah. Where as in the first arrangement there was with Capital Works, yes. for, uh, there were, I think there were eight countries, mm -hmm. uh, Kenya, Lesotho, Malawi, Namibia, Uganda, Tanzania, uh, Zambia, I think. Mm. Yes. I don't know if I'm leaving one out, but mm. yeah, Mozambique. Yes. Yeah, that was, and then they, with this arrangement, they, they decided because one of the main complaints we had internally uh, was that, um, you know, when we go and submit our, our you know, proposals, or if we respond to a tender, uh, amongst the compliance requirements, there's always that local shareholding, citizen shareholding aspect that we are questioned on. Mm. <laughs> and it was embarrassing at that time because mm -hmm. the local shareholding that we had was almost 6%. Six, that was it. Mm. So when, um, when they came through, I think part of, part of what they, they were very conscious about was mm. uh, having to have... Uh, significant, local, yeah. significant, significant uh, shareholding. 
Um, so they, they, they went in with uh, Africa Lighthouse Capital, which is a 100% mm. citizen-owned company. Mm -hmm. um, and then they, they bought Aon at the holding, uh, holding level. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and obviously, I think the, the, they 100% owned the other entities, okay. uh, which, which we'll talk about later. Yeah. Mm. You, Talk about, uh, I'm going to talk about shareholding in a moment. In fact, maybe this is a good time to touch on shareholding. Currently, what is the setup? Where are Botswana, where are the citizens? Are you also a shareholder? Uh, yes, let, let, let's, let, yeah, I'd, I'd said they, they came in with Africa Lighthouse Capital. Mm -hmm. And uh, Minette, own 66.67% mm -hmm. and Africa Lighthouse Capital owned the balance 33.33%. Uh, yes. Yes. So that made 100% that was the, the ownership at uh, Minute Holdings level. Yes. But Minute Holdings then owned three other companies. But these three other companies had other shareholders with, within them. Uh, because of the separation, we, we, we separated into Minette Botswana which is the sharehold, uh, the insurance side of the business. Mm -hmm. um, insurance, I'm talking assets. Short term short and long term. term. Yeah, short term and the, the long term group life and the life aspect. Mm. And then we were, we had the uh, pension fund administration and related services. Yes. And we also, we, were also, we had also had, even as we were in Aon, we also had a sister company called Aon Risk Management. Mm -hmm. So it became risk management, uh, and consultancy. We, we added mm. this consultancy because of the changes we had seen happening within the legislative state uh, area. Especially with yeah. that act. Yeah, so the, with the act and the, there were other things within the insurance act that were now uh, coming to the fore where they were saying uh, um, an agent cannot be an agent of a broker. It must mm -hmm. be an agent of, of yeah. an insurance company. And this To avoid for, conflict of interest. Yes, but for us, for us we, for us, really, we're not. We were still a broker to a client because mm. most of these agents, they all. I don't. I don't know if you know. Banks have mm. just decided to become insurance brokers now. Yeah, so yeah. So they're registering as agents. They, they will now be getting into the insurance space, and then they would come through to us as brokers to get them the best, mm. the best underwriter. So in they're the getting into your turf. <laughs> yeah, they're in our turf. But then this, 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 this change in legislation actually push them straight into mm. it because they removed the broker mm. and replaced the broker with uh, directly with the with the, the bank or whoever the agent mm. so they go directly to one underwriter and cutting us out mm. so we in the risk on the risk management side we created this consulting area where we can consult then the risk management company is not regulated by NBFIRA. no so it's uh, independent. It's independent, but uh, yes, I'll, I'll tell you about the services later. But then mm. we created a consulting area where we can then access all these other things that mm. maybe we cannot under the act. Yes. yes but that's a... Okay. Uh, so, so you didn't answer so the, the question of shareholding. Yes, yeah, so shareholding. Yes, it was Africa Lighthouse Capital, 66 point, yeah, 33 and uh, Mineral Holdings. And then at the lower level, the holdings, Mineral Holdings, Mineral Holdings, Mineral Holdings owns the risk management company, 100%. Mm -hmm. But under Aon, before the split and before the, the change, the brand change and whatever, mm. we had other minority shareholders who are, who are called synopsis. Uh, synopsis. Synopsis. <laughs> of all the names. <laughs> synopsis had come from the, the acquisition of Glen Rand. Mm. When we acquired Glen Rand in 2013, they were the local shareholders mm. they own 25 percent of glendon however when they were when, uh, when glendon was acquired by or merged or acquired by aeon mm -hmm. at the time because of the, the the difference in the values and the size of the company mm -hmm. the 25 percent was diluted to only <laughs> to only 1.72 percent of almost of, nothing of, yeah almost nothing but there were still shareholders yes yeah, and and we also had a, a staff share option uh, trust mm -hmm. uh, and a shop for the staff. So that's where I come in. Mm -hmm. Was I a shareholder? Yes, I was part no, of this. Through the staff. Through yeah. the staff, which owned 4.72% of, 
of Aon okay. at the time. But so when, you were, split, when the split, the split was equal, the share mm -hmm. only remained equal on both sides. Okay. Yes. That's very interesting. Mm. It seems the structure is somewhat complex, eh? Uh, are there individuals that we can point to and say these gentlemen have a substantial interest and they have a holding over this company, shareholding over this company? Uh, not necessarily. I, I, I don't think so, except if we point directly at the Minet, the Minet people who, who took over and came through to share with, mm -hmm. with uh, 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 Africa Lighthouse Capital. But let me then go back to that question to say... Mm. Africa Lighthouse Capital, being a private equity company, um, invests in local companies, and they they were were given 500 million by BPOPF, mm -hmm. which is a to manage. Yeah, to manage, and they are using this money to invest. So they've invested part of this money into Minet, mm -hmm. and. Our argument has always been that the pensioner sitting out there uh, is okay is a shareholder in that they is an funds, indirect it, shareholder. Is, is an indirect shareholder in that the funds have been mm. oh, the funds have been used to mm. to uh, to invest and grow the grow the money. Mm. So that's the, those are the individuals I can point to, mm. and possibly the the staff who are in the SO because they. Get, they get SOB? The, the SOP, so, Employee Share Option Trust. Yes, yes. Because they get the dividends directly, mm -hmm. that are sent directly to them. Yes. But they don't, it's not as significant as, as uh, one would say. But, mm. uh, you know, the, share, the pensioner sitting at home actually does play mm. a, a, a big role. And one thing I always want to point out, because um, not being 100% citizen owned sometimes mm. does disadvantage us uh, when we respond to tenders and the like. Mm. But uh, I would like maybe to just for those interested in really understanding this is that number one, yes, we have African Lighthouse Capital, they have the BPOPF money, mm -hmm. pensioners are, are, have an interest in the organization. Uh, we have ESOP, we have the employees, citizen employees, mm -hmm. they have a stake in the organization. And over and above that, we are the largest employer in the industry, and we employ over 120 Botswana mm -hmm. in the industry, with only about four. Mm -hmm. uh, now, now, now we have been reduced to three um, expatriates in the organization. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but there was a time when you had to let a lot of people go. Am I right? A yeah, year or two ago. A, um, no, just uh, just earlier this year yes. because of, number one, I mentioned the, 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 the COVID situation. COVID and then the legislative changes. Mm -hmm. When we removed from the equation where now banks could go directly to, to uh, underwriters, uh, it hit hard on our uh, uh, credit, life, credit mm -hmm. life. We had a significant credit life book, mm -hmm. we, which we have since rebuilt uh, ourselves just uh, for individuals and other organizations that are interested in coming directly to us. Mm -hmm. So we did have to let some people off. It was a, it was a bad time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it was not pleasant to do it, uh, but you know, running, running an organization, you have to look at uh, the bottom line. If, if the top line does not uh, come through for you, you have to see how you manage your costs. And, yeah. uh, and the shareholder is always knocking on your door <laughs> for shareholder value, so yeah. 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 Let's talk about the product offering for Menet Botswana. What what exactly are the products? Y yes, uh, like I said, we have three we have three entities now. We have the Minet Botswana uh, P two Ltd, which is the insurance space. Mm -hmm. And in the insurance space, we we insure anything that is insurable, uh, where there's an insurable interest. Um, we insure vehicles, houses. Mm. Now this is where maybe sometimes people don't people don't know we we, we are in every space mm. we are with banks mines including hosp business hospitals, risk as teachers, well yeah business risk hospitals very complicated risks mm. um, and we do individuals as well and um, those are really the areas we're in but we also have these add-ons you know mm. people I don't know if they are aware of a product called access buyback because sometimes you know people. 
will have the insurance and maybe it's a vehicle and when they're in an accident they, they start struggling with finding the excess. The insurance is there, mm -hmm. but it doesn't really help because now they're going to yeah. find this excess to pay before. Because the excess pays. can be up to 20% so sometimes. Yeah, yeah, it can be up to 20%. So the product like excess buyback and other add-ons that, uh, you know, if mm. people do come through to ask How does us, it work, the, the buyback? You, you buy the insurance and then you you pay extra to buy back your excess. If they say your excess is 5%, minimum mm. 10,000, whatever, mm. then you pay a, a, another premium to buy that excess mm -hmm. portion back. Yeah. So when you have an accident, mm -hmm. um, the insurance pays the whole lot. Okay. You just pack, put, put your car in there and take it out clean as it is and uh, um, uh, you, you, you drive away. Mm. Um, like I said, we, we show houses, we show uh, property within houses. This, with this, I'm really just talking to the individual because what we've noticed is that um, individuals are not really aware of what insurance is. <laughs> they only know life insurance mm -hmm. yeah, because they have agents who walk around and say, um, I'm selling this product, well, your life, and then you are covered. And, and people are happy that they, when they die, they have something. Mm. But there are so many other risks, you know, your expensive watches, mm. your... You know, because you have them, you have all risks where you can cover mm. anything. Yeah, even that key men, you. even yeah. key men insurance. You have key men insurance. That we, are, we, we, do, we do insurance across all areas. Mm. Um, um, mm. What, what we really want to know is whether there's an insurable interest. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and if there is, you know, we, we are in the position to go into the insurance space to ask the underwriter, if they can make a plan uh, and we structure a program for you. Mm. Because again, um, without really being, without really being uh, Boastful. Disrespect, no, <laughs> oh, dis dis disrespectful of the other, our competitors, mm. we've been in the space for a long time. What, we, what we, 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 we have tried to transform this insurance uh, intermediary space from mm. is from people selling a product off the shelf to, mm. to one way we give you a product that's relevant to you. Mm -hmm. You know, relevant to you, something that you are doing. What do you do every day? What keeps you awake at night? What are the things that you do? Uh, and then we go with that information and we go and develop something. And we come back to you and test it with you whether you'll be happy it has closed all the gaps for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we don't say, oh, you, oh, you, you own a building, then we come. Uh, building combined this much, uh, you know, mm. if you have employees, okay, workers come, okay, you know, we can do that, but mm. we really want to understand. You want comprehensive solutions. Yeah, we want comprehensive solutions, and it's mm. about you, mm. not about us. Mm. So that's where we think we offer the value, because we want to understand what is it that is worrying you. Yeah. Or if at all you are, <laughs> some people are not even aware they have a problem. Mm. So we talk to you, and, and as we are discussing with you, uh, we actually find out from the conversation mm. that you actually do have problems that you're not aware of. <laughs> yeah. We point them out to you. Yes. That's a very and offer break. solutions. And offer solutions. Go back. I mean, it's mm. not a thing over the table where you say, ah, now we can do this. We want to understand uh, what it is about mm. your business. Are you intending to grow into other areas and the like? So that's the first space. And then we have the pension admin space mm -hmm. uh, where we are uh, uh, administrators. People think we hold on to their pension money. We don't. Where we, is it kept? It goes to asset managers who then invest it somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. What we do, we are, we are administrators, and the actual funds that we administer, administrators for have got boards. They've got boards that manage that fund. Mm -hmm. So really, it's, a, it's, a, it's for us to just... Because people think we're sitting on this pile no, of money. Yeah, people think we're holding on to that money, you know, and you, and you, you do get... You do I'll get, tell you, I... I, I, oh. I I used to think that you guys make like tons and tons of money. There's a, a, a company owned by Warren Buffett. Um, it's, it's represented by Lizard. I'm trying to remember the name of this company. It's a big insurance, international insurance company. Okay. It, it advertises with a li small little small lizard. lizard. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Trying to think what it is. I'm trying to think what it is. But I read in a book Warren Buffett saying that he's not really an investor, but he's a, he manages cash. Yeah. that accumulates from the, through this insurance, yeah. that he's an allocator of capital. And most of this capital comes from the... Uh, because people don't always claim. Yes. So the impression that I got was that there's all this pile of money 
from claims that are not made, Big, no number one, mm. to claims that are blocked by lawyers. <laughs> yeah, or something. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. So, mm. um, so the picture is not quite like that. Um, you can have mine. Oh, I haven't, okay. I haven't, haven't had it yet. The picture from what you're telling me is it's not, not quite like that. No, yeah. no, no. Mm. Yes. There's, um, you have the pensioners mm. uh, collecting money into a fund mm -hmm. for maybe... Uh, Pay, pay through the employer. Geico. The name yeah. is Geico. Okay. That was trying to... Geico. G-I-E-C-O. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's advertised through a lizard. <laughs> by a lizard. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, yeah, this money then is... Uh, then the, uh, there's a board that's appointed, trust, board of trustees that's appointed to look after this money and to make sure that there's good governance there. Mm. And we come in, we advise, we say maybe uh, we should get an asset manager and they say, okay, let's go to tender, we get an asset manager, we go to tender, we say we've identified an asset manager who will take these funds and maybe, you know, mm. put them somewhere where they will grow. Uh, and then we are responsible for reporting to, uh, if it's an employer, uh, employer uh, uh, funded fund, or we we'll, we'll report back to the employer, we give reports, we give quarterly reports, we do the financials, and we get a fee. We never touch the money. We just mm. get a fee for doing that. Mm. So that is the space we're in. And until recently, we were also doing um, pre-retirement counseling for for BPOPF, mm -hmm. which has since gone to uh, a competitor through you know through the tendering system. Tender, through the tendering system. Mm. But we still obviously we still got those capabilities. Mm. Just if people want to, you know, want to maybe engage with us at mm. that level, we still got those capabilities. And then we have a third. Um, uh, insurance, sorry, the uh, subsidiary which I said is not necessarily regulated by MBFIRA, which is the risk management uh, and consulting company. Uh, and under the risk management, this is really where uh, we offer most of the value because this is a, di a differentiator for us. When we it sets when you apart from it the sets rent. us apart from because this no other uh, intermediary or broker has this thing. This is where we now go. I mean, these are for big risks, but we can do it for even the smallest risk. Mm. This is where we now go and um, do a risk survey on somebody's asset, on somebody. Mm. It's just the general risk of a, of, uh, of a potential client. Mm. We do the risks. And this is really, again, the very, very first stage for anyone to do before they insure. Mm. I didn't find out, identify your risks, see how you can mitigate them, uh, see how you address them. Uh, and if you can't, then insure, mm. you see? So we have this area where we do risk audits, risk surveys, and we also do where we, we I, I believe, probably the only ones we do plant, um, mm. plant, uh, plant and machinery. Yeah, plant and machinery evaluations. Mm. And then we, we also do, you know, enterprise risk management programs. And then we have this consulting space that I said we've put for, uh, if maybe there's a large claim at uh, mm. mines or Botswana yeah. Power Corporation or Telecom, then we, we do the claim advocacy. Mm. They can hire us to, uh, mm. because like I said, without being disrespectful to some of these, <laughs> to some of these brokers, yeah. uh, they don't, they're not at that level. They mm. don't have some of the expectations. They don't have the sophistication. The sophistication. Because yeah. we also, like, remember I said, we are, we are still part of, you know, the global AON mm. network. Yes. So we can still access, you know, expertise from anywhere. And you are bound by some of the ethical rules. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We, we, we but can. let me ask you this, uh, uh, Ramavum. Oh. Um, from the point of view of a startup or an entrepreneur, which is the majority of people who watch this show, yeah. what would you say from an insurance perspective when they start up a business? What are the sort of things they should look out for? Um, you know, on the in the insurance space. Yes. Yes, I think I think when they when when, when you start up a business, you, you I think you need you need to be concerned about um, protecting the the business itself. Mm. Um, okay, you have employees. Try and make sure that you protect the employees because it's it's a legislative uh, requirement. Mm. You know, you have to have workers' compensation for workers, mm. but then you have to you have to make sure that you you on the governance side of protect yourself, you know, get th insurances such as uh, professional indemnity insurances, and then you, you can then insure everything in the business. But another important aspect of a business is that mm. you must have a business interruption 
cover because is that the key main thing no 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 business interruption is some if something happens and your business is interrupted and you can't make money anymore if there's yeah. a fire for example and there's to, COVID, for example. If, if there's COVID, for example, but that is a very contentious area. It's, it's, it's still it's fluid, <laughs> and I can't, I can't commit to anything in that space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because they've had cases. Because they call them acts of yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. we've had cases in South Africa, you know, where some underwriters didn't want to pay, and some uh, had to pay some through had the to courts. Pay, yes, through the courts. But those are, you know, look after, look after number one, the people. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure that assets are covered and then make sure we protect the business in you know this is if it's interrupted if anything happens then after if mm. after that because um you can't say there's there's any useless mm. uh, type of insurance unless we so do. explain to them then the key man insurance oh, they, how they, it comes in uh, a key, especially a, for startups or for entrepreneurs oh okay yes it's okay it's because especially the other ones that are coming with the the, the the idea. Yes. No, a key man is, is a, as, it, as it says, key person. Mm. It's a key person insurance. You might have, for example, a chemist who comes and opens up uh, um, uh, a, a pharmacy. Brewery, a farm, or, no. or, yeah, let's say a pharmacy. But I was trying to find something that he only would have the expertise. So, yeah, says, yeah. okay, I've studied chemistry and I can mix these things. I'm, I'm, I'm studying yeah, this maybe brewery. brewery yeah, yes. I'm studying this brewery and... Uh, you know, I, I have the information, it's just me, and I'm going to hire like, an accountant and, mm. and other people around me. Mm. Um, but are the expertise the is expertise, within me. The expertise within me, or maybe it's in a book or something, but I'm, I'm the one who studied this in this space and I can do. Mm. So that's the key, man. So you are really getting insurance to buy this key, man, uh, the business protecting that. If this key person mm. then dies, then that expertise has gone, then you can, you might need to come and replace an individual with another individual mm. or a set of individuals to mm. keep the business going. Yeah. Or to pay it off and pay it off to, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. to go wherever. Yeah. And tell us a bit more about your consultancy, the consultancy business. Yes, I'm just saying this consultancy is the area where we, we would want to, to bring in added... It's one of the three companies, right? No, the, yeah, no. It's, well, the three companies, the, the other, the, the one that is the additional consultancy space, is uh, is really linked to to the risk management. Mm -hmm. I said the risk management; they do risk oh, surveys okay. and all that. But the consultancy is an area where we'd like to start playing in. So it's part of risk management. Yeah, it's part of risk management, but the companies that want us to possibly um, help them with. Mm. Uh, because they can now go direct, a bank can now go direct to uh, an insurance company. They might not have the expertise to to handle certain things, and then mm. they can come to us to to mm. ask for any help in our space mm. outside of the regulators. Uh, I get control. the sense that you you are a bit aggrieved about this change that has taken place because of this legislation, where they've actually cut you out. Yeah, and yes, I I, I, and and just reading between the lines, do you think something can be done about it? Is there any kind of lobbying you can do to have this law uh, changed? I th I believe so. Um, I don't know whether it's I don't know whether it's correct to say it here or not. But I'll be excused if it's not. But we we've we've we have approached the regulator mm -hmm. and have discussed with them because the the actual uh, the actual clause within the the act that. Uh, cause this mm. has actually got an additional line. It will say no sub-agent can be an agent of an insurance broker unless given the permission by the regulator. So they are ignoring this aspect, this mm. very last... Unless, this, yeah. yeah. They are ignoring this aspect and only dealing with this one. Mm. So we've had several engagements when it's that we're putting it in place, which is about two, three years ago. Mm. We had several engagements with them and that we asked them to unpack this last part. Mm. What do they mean? If they are going to ignore it, why is it there? Mm. Um, um, they, that's why I'm saying, I don't know whether we can tell, but they, they, they never say, gave a satisfactory yeah, they, yeah, answer. They never gave a satisfactory answer. In fact, mm. then they said to us mm. uh, to, you know, to really push it out of the, out of the door, they said, this is, Talking to a, you know, an, a, an agent, it's mm. got nothing to do with you. So we can't engage with you. Mm. We will engage with mm -hmm. the, the agent. So we, we, we had spoke to, find to our clients at the time mm. to say, 
uh, this is why you should, you should want to yeah. shoot, uh, advance as your argument. Mm. But they were, never, they were never given a satisfactory answer as well. Yeah. So uh, we were quite bitter around the space because yeah, it, was, no, it, was, it was quite a very uh, strong, yeah, very strong uh, for us in terms of revenue and mm. Mm. because it was high, high so high, most high like revenue. they pulled the carpet from under your feet yes, somewhat. They yeah. did, uh, mm. they did, and then the other thing that uh, we are currently seeing as a challenge, which I mentioned, I think earlier, is the Citizen Empowerment Act. Yeah, where tenders are now say 100% citizen, mm. and that completely closes us out because we will never be 100% citizen. Well, depends. Well, uh, possibly after some years, but mm. for as long as uh, I, I think I'm at the helm. It won't happen in, maybe, in, in my lifetime. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You see, maybe, maybe you should think of getting together as employees, especially the senior managers, yeah. to start buying shares incrementally. Increment, possibly. Yeah. But then I, another another argument could be that um, this thing is being applied to the wrong sector in the industry or the wrong line in the industry. Mm. We are intermediaries uh, when the procuring entity. Uh, puts out a tender, they say, 100% um, citizen owned. But we don't carry any risk. So our argument has always been, and that's the narrative we're really, really uh, pushing today. We are the intermediaries, we are brokers. Mm. Claims are paid, premium goes to an underwriter, and a claim is paid by an underwriter. And none of these underwriters will ever be 100%. They're not now, and they, they never will be. never be, except maybe for Western, who I think I heard the other time were 100% uh, mm. owned by Batman. Mm. So the, the, the... It will in future. Let's, let's, the, let's be yeah. positive. It will change, yeah, but it will take years. But yes, I think if they can only direct it to the appropriate line in, mm. the, in the chain, yeah. in the value chain, which is the underwriter, to say, you'll be carrying the risk you should be 100% citizen. But mm. they can never be because these risks, some of these risks are so large, they need to be reinsured. Yes, They yes. need to be reinsured. And sometimes they keep nothing to their net and then reinsure mm. into, into you know, other countries. Let's talk about the vision and mission. Under you, Ramavuma, what is the, the vision for, for Minet Botswana? And what is the mission? Well, maybe to start with the mission, really what... We, what uh, because when we were acquired by Minet, we went off to have a strategy, strategy session to look at our challenges and really how our future looks like in the next three to five years. Mm. And so you went on a strategic was, workshop, yeah, strategic planning yeah, workshop. Yeah, strategic working, yeah, workshop, mm -hmm. look at what, what, what we are on, what we are now as Minet, what we want to do now given the current uh, Legislative, legislative changes, the new CE laws, and like, then we, we just we felt okay, yes, um, this is now where we're looking. But then our mission really is to just become we we, we were trusted as as you know, people knew because of the the, the brand, uh, the global it's a brand. strong brand. Yeah. So we want, yeah, we want, so we really just want to be the tr the trusted risk. Um, because that's the, the insurance area, mm. um, employee benefits, and reinsurance. Uh, providers or advisors. Trusted risk and reinsurance yeah, advisors. Risk, uh, risk uh, employee benefits. Yes. Uh, reinsurance mm. advisors. Mm -hmm. uh, through a partnership, you see, we want to. We want. We don't, like I was saying earlier on. We don't come to you and mm -hmm. give you a already packaged thing. We engage you. So through partnership with yes. our with our with our stakeholders mm -hmm. and then we want to be able to give you a relevant uh, mm -hmm. solution to your to so you, the line really just is to be the trusted risk employee benefits and reinsurance uh, and a provider of a relevant solution provider to our stakeholders. So at what point will you say mission accomplished? Um, we are quite some distance away. I believe um, I believe with us having just transitioned from Aon last year to now, mm -hmm. we only hit a year in June last year. Mm -hmm. Because that's when we re in June this year, that's when we rebranded. Yes. So having gone a year and having had these challenges and the retrenchments, I think we are some distance away. But I, I, um, I, I believe now we have we've, we are at the crossroads. We have mm -hmm. passed all the. The challenge is now, I believe we can now start sure. a new journey. Yeah, yeah. Because now in the vision, we are... Yes, we are, I was going to yeah, ask you about Now the in the vision, it's really got 
it's a long vision even even our director say that's too long yeah. so i'll just i'll really just summarize we we believe because having joined um having joined minet mm -hmm. we realized that minet had pillars as pillars as a, as a, as, as the that vision mm. so we, we said no we'll have a pillar that talks to our employees we want our employees to be the best uh, they must be paid well uh, they must have the talent uh, they must be um, empowered to whatever they want to do mm -hmm. within a work environment that's that's, re that's really comfortable mm. then we went to technology and said we see even before COVID, we actually seeing changes in banks that people want to work online nobody really wants to be doing the the visits to any office mm. so we're talking about our technology to be relevant we wanted to um, so it's really long it's, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> so we, want, yeah, we talked about technology and uh, obviously we wanted the technology to be relevant we wanted, we wanted it to be uh, current uh, digital and the like and mm. then we went to uh, risk and compliance because that's another area where it's very important nowadays the regulatory uh, space is 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 uh, is quite uh, strong on compliance, corporate mm -hmm. governance, and the like. So we talk to that, and we want to be the ones that lead. Um, so you want to be number one? Yeah, we want, really we want to be in in in, in all areas of our business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, compliance, and then another, the one, the main one, is really to diversify our income streams. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to diversify income streams by having. Uh, uh, Relationships through mm -hmm. relationships uh, through distribution channels, mm -hmm. um, through just doing new products because we've seen that the traditional way of doing insurance is being challenged. We are mm -hmm. being hit number mm -hmm. one by the CE. If you are not uh, citizen, then don't don't yeah, don't, yeah. don't participate. Mm -hmm. So let's find other things that will bring income. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even if you don't, we, there are still corporate lines like Bore mm -hmm. and other things that people can. But we really just want to diversify that. Yeah. We want to have a reputation remain in, uh, intact. intact. We, yeah, we want to provide value for our clients, mm -hmm. and we want to have a sustainable impact in the in the in the, the so, ecosystem. In, in the in the ecosystem as we operate in. Mm -hmm. And finally, obviously, we want to give shareholder value. Wow. Yeah. Wow. We we made it that long because mm -hmm. we we really just taking off uh, you had to the back take of, a lot of things and then and compress, compre them. compress them some will argue that you still need to break it down, down and, to, and simplify it no a but then more. yes but then as because you want you want you want the cleaner and the receptionist to be able to, to, articulate. to articulate yeah mm. but um, i am we are, yes we really now the four basic focus areas yes but um uh, my lady over there is working on, on we're working on uh, what we call a world cafe where we'll really be cascading mm -hmm. everything down to the rest of the stuff on the 5th of August just to, to break it down now to mm -hmm. uh, small nuggets. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to small nuggets it's, that people It's a very will, good choice <laughs> of words. <laughs> yes. yeah. That people will uh, appreciate. Now everyone within the organization will know where exactly we are going yeah. and, uh, yeah, and mm. that's, that's... Okay. Mm. Now, Botswana are embracing insurance in general, but there's still hopefully a minority that thinks insurance is a bit of a rip-off. They think that insurance, 99% of the things really never come to pass. What would you say as overall advice uh, in response to that? Yeah, I think my, my advice would be really that that's um, a very dangerous approach to, to have uh, because... Insurance basically uh, secures, that's our tagline, secure tomorrow. It secures what you don't know is going to happen tomorrow. So you really, you are really paying something definite now in insurance for something that you, you don't know the magnitude of yeah. if it ever occurs. So insurance, whether life or anything that you find valuable to you, is a very, very important, um, uh, is a very important mm. uh, uh, I don't know what to say. So you should, it should be an important aspect of your life. Are you able if to you give? Are, if you are for, you can afford it. Are you able to give examples from your very extensive career as to how the failure to insure can have unfortunate consequences? Yes, I mean uh, very easy, simple. Uh, examples are vehicle insurance. Mm -hmm. You buy. You, you buy a very expensive vehicle because you really like you really like it and you want to be seen in it. And the the insurer, if somebody says insure it, then you go and you, you are told the, the premium and you 
you think, you think no, this is a bit much. too much. Mm. This is a bit too much. And then you go off and unfortunately something happens. Uh, mm. Not even because of you, maybe a cow comes to and you, you hit it. That's a, that's a very basic example of mm. what insurance does. You would have paid a definite amount, struggle how you get it, but pay it and mm. you, you, you will be then be protected. Because there have been people who have been seen walking is at the same time the installments are coming yeah. out. The you car see, is gone. The car is gone. But you are still paying every month. Now take a, a bigger asset, the house. Mm. Yeah. And one thing people, I've, I've told people on surprise is that house insurance is the cheapest insurance you can get. Mm. House insurance, I mean, if I give an example, if a, if a house that maybe costs, uh, simple example again, if a house costs 100,000, you probably pay 125 yeah. a year, mm. not a month. If it costs 100,000, mm. and in a year... It, so if it's a million, it's, it's a million, it's 1.2. 1.2 in a year. Mm. You know, some of, some of these things, these are decisions that you should, you should take maybe just having checked all, mm. all sides. So really, I mean, if an asset like that goes uh, you again, finished, you are yeah. finished. Mm. So those are the examples. And you have, you have larger, bigger examples of, uh, you know, mines going in mm. and insurances were not structured properly. Yeah, I think part of this wrong perception, I think, mm. is it comes from sometimes uh, when you make a claim, you have been made to jump a lot of hoops sometimes, and sometimes lawyers get involved to deny you your claim, and the public might think, why should I put myself through that? Yeah, that, is, that has uh, been a problem that a lot of people have experienced. Mm. Um, that is why sometimes we, we as brokers, when we when we sell our value is that you really need somebody to speak on your behalf. Somebody with an intermediary. Yeah, an intermediary with expertise, you, mm. not just an intermediary. You don't go and get your uncle and say, no, <laughs> come, come, I have a problem. You have to have somebody on your side who will speak on your behalf and speak intelligently mm. and understand and break down. You don't need to go to a lawyer if you have a broker. Mm -hmm. I mean, a broker will go to a lawyer for you and pay the lawyer themselves if you have a broker. Mm. And one of the people, again, misunderstand about an intermediary is the f they think that you pay extra to have an intermediary. Mm. If, the, if you go to an underwriter and he says your premium will be 1,000 and you go to a broker, your broker will say your premium will be 1,000. You don't pay extra, but you get that additional value mm -hmm. within the uh, value chain where you are now uh, under the arms of somebody who is an expert in the space. Mm -hmm. or in the field or in the industry. No, you've answered yeah. that, that concern. Mm -hmm. How is um, insurance redeveloping in this, uh, in the context of 4IR in terms of digitization to accommodate um, even the new normal yes, under COVID-19? Yes, I think COVID-19 COVID um, really sped things up. I, I know uh, that after the banks, uh, you know, started having their online transactions and the like, um, even we at uh, at Aon at the time we had worked on a on a five year IT strategy to digitize. And um, with the advent of COVID, everything was sped up somewhat because it meant now uh, you couldn't have direct contact. Mr. Mm. Mokobi could not come into my everything office. Everything was on Zoom. <laughs> yes, everything was on Zoom. So yes, I with that it has it has, it has uh, sped things up, um, uh, and I think it is, it is a positive development, and I think it's a development that's going to stay. And I think um, uh, what it has helped uh, uh, us do is it has obviously as a disadvantage, but it has helped us do is we are, we are able to we are able to talk to a lot of people at, at any one time. Mm. You know, you can have a webinar and mm. have everybody log in from. Anywhere that really gives you access to even a lot in of, their pajamas, even in their pajamas, <laughs> that, gives you, that gives you access to quite a lot of people. Mm. And the developments now is that people can now submit claims, mm. there are shorter claims. Um, uh, information is at the touch of your button, you don't necessarily need to sit there, look for files, and the like. So, have you put systems in place to enable your employees to do that from their homes? Yes, um, uh, when the when COVID hit us, we we immediately, I mean, we, d we did realize the risks before. We are in the risk space. We realized the risks before. For our clients, the, you know, with the lockdowns, they might, some might not be able to do proper news at the time. There'll be mm -hmm. risks, and we, we handle that to, to mm -hmm. be able to do online. And then we sent our employees home. 
Mm -hmm. um, we first started, you know, working on a 25% uh, office uh, attendance, mm -hmm. but then we we bought Wi-Fi uh, units for everyone, mm -hmm. uh, so that they could work from home. And for those that needed special uh, desk, and we, we made sure that we, we, we supply them. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone got home, and everybody was on uh, a phone or a smartphone mm -hmm. uh, in the event that uh, you know think people really needed to to talk to them. And those are things that are there to stay. Mm. We 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 considered uh, putting uh, calling back people into the office, but then there was a Daiko event. I'm not blaming it. <laughs> there was a Daiko event that was that happened, and then. Uh, Monday, Tuesday after that, we had six to ten cases within the office, mm. so people get, got back home. But mm. because we had already had, we put these, these infrastructures in, in place, place. At, their, at their homes, it did not disturb did the not, business at yeah. all. So, for example, I and my executive team and the subsidiaries, mm -hmm. um, we do most of the work from home and we, we, we have meetings okay. all over the place. Right. And maybe before we go, maybe I, 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 need, to, we, I need to mention that um, these three subsidiaries have got the managing directors. Oh. So that I, don't, I don't want us to miss this aspect. So are you not managing all three? No, I am I'm the group managing director sitting at the holdings. Remember I said there's a oh, holding. Oh, so they're under you, these three directors. Yes, I'm a group managing director. And the managing director for Minet Botswana is Mr. Michael Sinchonera. Mm -hmm. uh, the managing director for the retirement company is Mr. Lemakhelang uh, Ibideng, mm -hmm. and the managing director for the risk management business is Mr. Gabriel Kariza. Okay. And I mean, if anybody wants you know, further information around products and uh, they need around, to go to yeah, those, yeah, they can talk directly to these gentlemen and their teams, mm. and then I think that's where they'll get the help. Oh, thanks for clarifying that. Yes. Um, as we come to the end, I want you to grab your crystal ball, sir. Um, as we come to the end of our conversation and um, tell us what you see uh, from the point of view of brand Banamas uh, Mavuma and the company 10 years, 15 years down the line. Um, what, what do you see uh, unfolding? Uh, one has always got to be po positive. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, um, because this company is a, is a, is a group, an African, Pan-African group Mm -hmm. um, it's got structures within that. Firstly, I see us, I see us uh, getting out of this rut that we're in now in terms of the, the legislative changes and the, the business that, I've lost, like, that we've lost, like I told you. Mm -hmm. And because of the things we are doing now, I see us in the next three to four uh, years um, really back at the top um, uh, and uh, doing the revenues that we had uh, uh, Thought we'd do by now, uh, we're that not of the change. To. Yeah, that we are accustomed to. I mean, we've already started. You've got the likes, the likes of Ma Kumabadi Sangeza, our marketing executive, who recently hired her, mm. and with what she has planned, I think we're going to do wonders. Mm. And for brand Madabas, I, I, I've been mentored and I've been taught that you get to position to grow others into your into your position. You really work these people and mentor them so hard that they push you out of your job. So I, I'm, <laughs> you have to make yourself irrelevant. Yeah, yeah I'm, I've, I've, I'm making myself irrelevant. And the fact that I have three MDs that reported to me has, has started showing me that uh, you know, you're, you're really out of a job now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You can only just provide leadership and uh, wisdom. Mm. But I think uh, uh, I'd like to see myself obviously get into the group at a... At a, at a, at a, at a uh, a, a, a position where I can influence the entire, you the don't, entire You're group. not aspiring to, to be a major shareholder? No, I'm, com I'm coming to that. I think as I get into the group, they, 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 do, they do now mm. give you access to the other companies mm. in terms of maybe shareholding. Because I've seen, I've seen it happen with the current mm -hmm. uh, group leaders that they, okay. you know, they, they have a stake in, in, all, the, in mm. all the companies. Mm. So, I mean, uh, even if it's a... Five percent stake in each. I mean, if you yeah. bring them together, depending on that performance. Five percent of perform such a huge thing is yeah. a lot. <laughs> it's the performance, of course. Um, uh, I've, I've, I've got a farm near, near Kumakwani here, mm -hmm. thirty kilometers out. Mm. Um, 
uh, got a borehole and other things, I'm putting solar and other things. And mm. uh, obviously, if that does not work, mm. I, I, I'm putting the infrastructure <laughs> In for farming place. now. Yeah. So that maybe if that doesn't work, I can, yes. I can go and retire there. But You are insuring your future. Yeah, but, for, <laughs> but for as long as my, my insurance skills are required within the organization, not even insurance, um, mm. leadership skills yes, yes. Uh, and, uh, you know, um, I'm, I'm still willing to remain in there. And of course, <laughs> with Shay holding. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, you know. Time to ask me a question, say, if you have one for me. Just one. Uh, um, I'm quite aware that you've, you've, you've like I said, I, I know you, you've, you've, you've actually um, done quite well in the business space. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've, I've heard, I've heard, uh, a few of your nuggets. <laughs> Just keep using it. If it's relevant, it's yeah, okay. it is if, relevant. It's not, if it's not, it's not. Yeah, bad. Keep thing. mentioning that word. Yeah, I'm happy. Yes, <laughs> if it's relevant. But yes, maybe just to, for my benefit and others, just what is it that drives you, and what what is it that actually um, makes you wake up and find these opportunities? Because mm. you don't do this without you know finding yeah. an opportunity. It's, it's not a just two there. way. Mm. It's, it's a two two way answer that I can give. Uh, one. It's selfish uh, considerations that I want to keep my mind active, keep my mind alive, and in terms of being in a position to be uh, alert and uh, aware of these opportunities. Um, that's, that's a selfish consideration. But the more uh, general one is that we want to mentor, we want to influence others, to empower others. We say in our tagline that we enthuse, we energize, we inspire, and we empower. Mm. So I wake up, you know, with a spring in my step every morning, knowing that there are people who are benefiting as a result of our efforts, as a result of our, um, the business that we bring in. So um, I'm, I'm inspired by the desire to serve and empower others. As long as I'm able to do that, and in the process, be able to feed my family. In the process, be able to grow my as a as a as a business. So, um, and and there has been a, a huge deficit in terms of our ecosystem, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of entrepreneurial development. I also feel that I can have a role to play through entities such as Angel Network Botswana, through my direct efforts and mentorship, and develop others so that we do develop second, third, fourth, and multiple generation uh, entrepreneurs. So that's part of the, the motivation to try and do that. Mm -hmm. With Angel Network Botswana, for instance, where there are about 50 of us, mm -hmm. I formed this organization two years ago, and there are 50 other entrepreneurs who are you know, investing into startups okay. with the aim of improving the ecosystem. So these are the things that excite me. I hope oh. I've answered your question. I think you have. and. Uh of course, this is an example of what you, what, what we're having now is an example of what you're doing in terms of just trying to help others yeah, grow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With this being broadcast, then I think we can, we, we will see the change. Uh, yes. Yes. That camera yes. is for you to speak to the viewers and leave them with something, one, one or two inspirational, motivational messages as we wrap up. Wow, I did not expect that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm to Holdings. Um, insurance how to how we can you hold book on so yeah how your future in the jang have you secured it are we packing it it's a it's a scan so we were recently been hit by the covid pandemic and we have seen a lot of people lose lives and some of them were fortunate that their employers had arranged insurances for them and their families but some had not uh, for more we've seen it affect many lives, uh, livelihoods about to really change because of um, the changes in Matsuwa uh, when more breadwinner about to hit or just the companies suffering maybe the South Konohoba for the Botlika 
you know, the level of business that they're making and having to reach trench them. These are very unfortunate things. But insurance make sure that you look at your life and see whether in terms of insurance to protect your assets and your life. Thank you so much. Okay. Can you please give them your contact uh, details uh, where they can access you, even on social media or access your company rather? Um, you can find us at Minette House. Uh, it's at the Habono Show Grounds office area, plot 50368. Uh, you will see our brand name on the front, uh, Minette. Um, we also have an office in Francis Town. And um, the number you can get us on is 3617300. And the lady at reception will take you through to each or either of the areas, subsidiary areas that you want to talk to. And now I'm also a phone call away uh, I believe that if somebody has not received sufficient uh, assistance by anyone within the organization, they may contact me to ask me to see how we, I can solve the problem. My contact number is 7210-1741. It is a number that I use and I will never uh, ignore a call unless, of course, I'm in a meeting, but please do, do contact us. All right. Thank you very much. You've been a great, great guest and you've shared so generously. We'd like one to say here at Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom, we appreciate you, sir, and we thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.